Franco-American cannot beat. Franco-American just can't beat. Franco-American, nine out of ten will agree. Yes, Franco-American, the spaghetti nine out of ten prefer, brings you The Rochester Show, starring Eddie Anderson. Hello, Mr. Benny, this is Rochester. I hate to ask you, but I'm behind on my apartment rent. Yes, I know what Shakespeare said about money. He who steals my purse steals trash. Well, you owe me six weeks back trash. <laughs> Do you know how easy it is to make a meal of leftovers look and taste extra special? Simply add a side dish of Franco-American spaghetti. It's ready in five minutes and so delicious that nine out of ten who try it prefer Franco-American to any other ready-to-serve spaghetti. Only the finest spaghetti goes into Franco-American. Then it's cooked in a sauce that contains 11 choice ingredients. Do you wonder thousands of families serve Franco-American spaghetti exclusively instead of the home-cooked kind? Try it yourself. Franco American, the spaghetti preferred by nine out of ten who taste it. And now we go to the Jefferson Boulevard apartment of Rochester Van Jones. It's his day off from duties at the Jack Benny household, so we find him in a cheerful mood as he stands before the mirror shaving. His rich baritone rings out. My heart knows what the wild goose knows. My heart goes where the wild goose goes. Mother goose, brother. Oh, oh, I cut my chin again. Every day I cut my chin in the same place. Oh, well, that's the way Cary Grant got his start. <laughs> Come in. Hey, your suit from the dry cleaners, Rochester. Well, wait a minute, Fred. You're supposed to have two of my suits. One's missing. I know. Mr. Benny came and got it. <laughs> Mr. Benny. Dog darn it, if he keeps picking up his own suits, I won't have a thing to wear. Uh, say, Rochester, I think your landlady, Mrs. Calloway, is on her way up here again for a rent. Why doesn't she leave me alone? Whatever Mr. Bennett gives me, I turn over to her. All I am is a middleman in the local Marshall plan. <laughs> well, Rochester, you know it, it ain't only the money. Mrs. Calloway is sweet on you. Mrs. Calloway weighs 200 pounds. She ought to lay off sweets. Well, what's the matter with having a 200-pound girlfriend? I like small packages. I don't buy bulk. <laughs> well, it can't be thankful she likes you. Or you'd been kicked out of your apartment long ago. Oh, Rochester! Uh-oh, there's Miss Calloway now. See, see that look on her face? Oh, that's love. It is? Well, don't let it get around. It might make the whole thing unpopular. Oh, see you later. <laughs> you in. Now, Mrs. Calloway, Jenny, you don't want to spoil a beautiful day for both of us. I don't want any of your soft soap, Rochester. I want hard cash. Jenny, and may I call you Mrs. Calloway? I will pay you every penny. I'm expecting some money from the government. Money from the government? Yes, yeah, Social Security when I'm 65. <laughs> Rochester, I'm tired of this stalling. I'm going to evict you. Mrs. Calloway, and may I call you Jenny? You wouldn't do that. Think of it, evicted. Picture me out on that sidewalk surrounded by my furniture. You haven't got no furniture. You've got me out on the sidewalk, at least let me be comfortable. <laughs> and another thing, I get sick and tired of taking messages from your low-brow girlfriend. They're not low-brow. You ought to see my new girlfriend in a bathing suit. There ain't a single tattooing on her that isn't from the old masters. <laughs> Rochester, haven't you ever thought of finding the right woman and settling down and getting married? No, Jenny, I don't think I'm quite ready for combat duty. <laughs> don't you believe that stuff? Why, the late Mr. Calloway and me never had a single fight in our whole married life. You didn't? Uh, what's the secret? How did you and Mr. Calloway have such a peaceful marriage? I outweighed him by 40 pounds, and he was a coward. <laughs> well, Jenny, I've got to finish dressing, and don't worry about the rent. I've got an appointment with Willie Johnson at the cigar store. Says he's got a big deal cooking. That Willie Johnson is a no-good loafer, and he'll only get you into trouble. You're wrong, Jenny. Willie's smart. He's got parts of his head he hasn't even used yet. <laughs> yeah, and that goes for his whole head. He's just a fast-talking promoter. Jenny, why, Willie's... Full of good ideas. 
Uh, he would have thought of the H-bomb, but he just couldn't think of the letter. <laughs> uh, I'll see you later. Package cigarettes? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Come in again. Uh-oh. Here, here come that no-good Willie Johnson. He's always mooching. I better get rid of this change. Oh, man, what sweet music. That's the sweetest music this side of heaven. What are you staring at, Willie Johnson? The cash register, boy, the cash register. Well, it ain't gonna do you no good. This is a cigar store, not a piggy bank. Willie, why don't you get yourself a job? You mean work? Yeah, I mean work. You mean get up early in the morning and get home late at night? Yeah, I mean get up early in the morning and get home late at night. You mean physical, manual labor? Yeah, I mean physical, manual labor. You just talked me out of it. <laughs> Willie Johnson, you're the laziest man I know. I watched you once, and you wouldn't even brush a fly off your nose. You just sat there hoping he'd hear a mating call. <laughs> well, don't you worry your little head about Willie Johnson. I got a big deal cooking right now. Good Lord, don't tell me you're going to sell the Golden Gate Bridge again. No, don't be silly. I lost the lease. <laughs> Ramsey, if this idea of mine goes through, I'll be rich. Now, all I got to do is to get Rochester to work with me on this deal. Rochester? What's he got to do with this? Everything. He's got connections. He works for Mr. Benny. Working for Mr. Benny ain't a connection. That's a short circuit. <laughs> <laughs> well. Well, well, if it ain't Mr. Rochester Van Jones. Hello, Ramsey. Hello, Willie. Friend Rochester. It certainly relaxes my eyeballs to catch sight of my very bestest ally in this old world. It does my poor heart good to gaze at a man so bright, handsome, charming, healthy, and wealthy. Uh-oh. I got a feeling this is going to cost me. <laughs> Willie, as Julius Caesar said... Vinny, Vinny, Vichy. I came, I saw, and I'm going to get out of here fast. <laughs> yeah, and if, if, if so, one of you don't buy something worthwhile in a minute, both of you going to get out of here fast. Well, all right, Ramsey. I'll take 15 of the usual cigars. Why, Mr. Van Jones, I thank you. Here are your 15 cigars. You're welcome, and here's your dime. Thank you, and here's your nickel change. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh... Willie, I'm a pretty busy boy. Uh, what's on your mind? Well, Rochester, I got a scheme that's going to make us both rich. I hear you, friend Willie. Your pockets is going to bulge with that green stuff. I hear you, friend Willie. Uh, you is going to be up there in the high bracket. I hear you, friend Willie. Now, all you got to do is to ask a small favor of Jack Benny. Uh-oh, I just went deep in both ears. <laughs> But, friend Rochester, this scheme is sure fire. Willie, I hereby tender my resignation from your corporation. Oh, Rochester, I ain't formed a corporation yet. That's all right, Willie. My resignation will keep tender until you do. <laughs> Rochester, have you ever known any of my ideas to fail? All of your ideas fail. Now, there you are. I'm backing a thousand percent. Okay. I'll listen to your scheme, Willie, but only with one ear. The other one's for backing out. <laughs> Rochester, I found us the most... Beautiful, gorgeous girl by the name of Clooney Watson who should be in pictures. How beautiful? Well, friend Rochester, just take the eyes of Lena Horne, the nose of Hedy Lamar, the legs of Betty Grable, and the chassis of Jane Russell. Now you take all them things and put them together, and what you got? Mmm, good. <laughs> Rochester, you and I is going to be Clooney's agents. And whatever she makes, we is going to split 50-50. But that ain't right, Willie. If you take 50% and I take 50%, how will Clooney eat? She lives with her mother. <laughs> <laughs> Willie, it ain't right for us to divide that girl's money up 50-50. I'm going to take, I'm going to give Clooney 40% and I'm just going to take 10%. Yeah, and to show you I'm the right sort of a guy, Rochester, I'm going to let you. Now, all you have to do is to persuade Jack Benny to do you a favor and get Clooney Watson an interview at the uh, movie studio. I don't know, Willie. Mr. Benny and I have a unique type of relationship. At no time do we ever discuss favors, politics, or the horn blows at midnight. <laughs> I'm afraid I can't help you. Well, hello there, Willie. Well, if this ain't a prearranged coincidence, 
Now, as we talk, who should walk in but the lovely Miss Clooney Watson? Now, last year, Miss Watson was voted by the boys down at the YMCA as the girl for whom they'd like most to fall out of a window whistling at. <laughs> Clooney, say hello to friend Rochester. Hello, friend Rochester. I said hello. Hey, Rochester, don't just stand there with your mouth open. Say something. Close my mouth so I can open it again. <laughs> Tell me, Rochester, what do you do? Name it. <laughs> Clooney, you'd have to help me convince Rochester to get you into pictures. I have no idea how to convince him. <laughs> Rochester, I just know you'll do everything you can to help me Because you're so sweet, you're charming, you're an angel Keep going, if you run out of words, I'll help <laughs> Rochester, if I get into pictures, I'll be so grateful Do you think you can? I don't know, but it's sure gonna be a lot of fun trying <laughs> Hey, Rochester, that Clooney is quite attractive, isn't she? Yes, sir. Wow, and other expressions of glee. <laughs> oh, you're kind of fallen, huh? Mr. Stevenson, the last time I saw a dish as tasty as that, it was a plate of Franco-American spaghetti. Ah, now you're talking my language. Franco-American spaghetti. It's so delicious that nine out of ten who taste it prefer Franco-American to any other ready-to-serve spaghetti. And thousands who once served nothing but the home-cooked kind now serve Franco-American spaghetti exclusively. And you know why? No home-cooked spaghetti tastes quite like Franco-American. You see, Franco-American starts with the best spaghetti money can buy. Then it's cooked with a sauce made of 11 different ingredients, including generous helpings of the finest aged sharp cheddar cheese and luscious red sun-ripened tomatoes. Even if you knew the secret recipe and could get all of the best ingredients, you still couldn't prepare a spaghetti of comparable quality at anywhere near the price. Yes, Franco-American costs less to serve than the home-cooked kind. Stock up tomorrow. Ask for a half dozen cans of Franco-American, the spaghetti preferred by nine out of ten who taste it. <laughs> Rochester, do you really think you can get a girl into pictures? Yes, Jimmy, I think I can. <laughs> well, then, do you think you can get me into pictures? Yes, Jimmy, but with you, it'll have to be a double feature. <laughs> Listen in tomorrow to The Rochester Show, starring Eddie Anderson, brought to you this same time every night, Tuesday through Saturday, by Franco-American Spaghetti. The Rochester Show is directed by Tony Stanford and written by Charlie Isaacs, Hal Goodman, and Ben Starr. This is Bob Stevenson speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>